One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. This is almost a beginner webinar, but I'm hoping that experienced traders maybe get something out of it or, you know, maybe like non-beginners get something out of this too. But I definitely think this is something that we all kind of have to go over. Like, the, like the, what we talk about in this webinar kind of has, like every trader has to know this stuff. So like I had fun, I had fun doing this one. So we're going to be talking about market efficiency, how to kind of spot it, how to formulate theses around it. You know, like what you, like, you know, things that you have to contemplate when, um, when determining if there's like opportunity or not. So we're going to get into that stuff. Uh, yeah. So the overall market is still like for, for the last like three weeks or not lo longer than that, for the last like month or so, I thought that we would kind of have this choppy uptrend. Like I, I, it would not be clean. You know, excuse me. It would not be clean like this. You know, this is what you would call like a nice kind of like solid uptrend, you know, something, something like, like this it's it's just slowly chugging 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 you know with you know like respectable pullbacks but nothing too severe right and or even this one just I, this is a solid uptrend from 2019 to 2020 it's just chug 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 i felt like we would have an uptrend but it would be choppy and like you can kind of see already like this is very wacky these last couple of weeks and so that's kind of what we have and that's kind of what like I, I expect it to, to happen what I expect to continue up until probably probably for like another month I would say for another month or so until all tensions kind of you know all political tensions uh, come down you know um, everything that's supposed to happen does happen and you know a lot of the all the uncertainty can kind you know like a lot of the uncertainty that we see with coronavirus and all that stuff. Until all that stuff settles down, I don't think that we're going to see smoothness in the market at all. I think it's a fair assumption to make. Um, but anyway, uh, last week we were kind of, you know, like we, we, had, we had just saw that the last two weeks of the market were really kind of volatile, right? Really not that stable at all. But we were starting to see that, that, that stability light at the end of the tunnel um, as the market kind of continued that choppy uptrend that I just talked about, but it seemed like the floor was getting steadier and steadier. Um, and the market and my, like I discussed this last week, I thought the market was showing relative strength, you know, given that we, you know, we were still in economic distress, but the market was at all time high showing that, you know, comparatively to the GDP, right? Like we shouldn't be, but yet the market is showing this, um, this vigor, this, this confidence that we will eventually recover. And so it, it seems like in an attempt to kind of pre-price everything that we're, we're still here at all time highs. And so um, basically I thought that we would just see that slow continuation of the trend. Um, and this week I sent, you know, like we were basically flat this week. Um, this week was a overall flat week. Um, just not much happening, just kind of a stall here. And I think this is a stall right before January 20th, right before supposedly, you know, a lot of um, uncertain things are going to become certain and finalized. And so uh, I think that's, you know, slight stall, like, hey, we, you know, we're already at all time highs. Let's just make sure everything, everything does happen that's supposed to happen before we continue higher. I think that's, that's kind of what's going on. If I had to place a guess. And so like, you know, like we got that news this week, I think it was yesterday, right? Or two days ago that, um, that this new vaccine is supposed to be beefy enough to handle like the new strain of the virus. And that's another, you know, that's another like bearish concern on the market, right? That, that, that's a weight on the market right now. And so like anything that we can do to make that, that weight lighter, um, is going to create more stability in the stock market and get us more on track to that, that steady uptrend that the spy likes to do. And so, um, you know, and like, you know, we saw that like yesterday, a whole, a whole bunch of stocks, like kind of rallied on that kind of news in large cap land. And that, you know, that kind of shows that sentiment remains the same is that, that, that bullish optimism that's keeping that, that uptrend going. I do think the last hurdle we have is that January 20th inauguration that's going to happen. Um, and after that, I think the spy will have a less choppy time that 400 psych 
level resistance is kind of looming plus the 20 at the head because we have those two things for the next week. I, I don't really see the spy going anywhere. I think, you know, maybe another week of this, you know, the thing is, is that market, like I did, I talked about this in the price action webinar. Socks do not like to chill at highs because longs get nervous and shorts get excited when socks stall at highs. So like, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, um, like if I had to guess, I would guess maybe a, a slight pullback this week, just, uh, or a pullback should happen. And if we just hold flat up here, that would really show some, some relative strength, I think, just because, you know, like the, we, we're kind of flat this week and the market's just been up and down, up and down up here. And the market typically doesn't like to do that unless it's relatively strong um, or there's a pullback happening. And with this 400 Cypher resistance and the 20th head, I don't see us going up. So I think the best case scenario is that we kind of just hold, we, you know, we kind of just hold a high bid. And then, you know, like if that's the case, then we, we continue higher after. What's this? Uh, you'll never find a wretched hide. What, what is, is that supposed to be California or DC? I know. Oh, it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I see it. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in the MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Anyway, and so like last week in the small cap markets, right? Like it was the return of the day twos, right? And this is actually the last couple of weeks, but I, I, I didn't do a webinar for the previous week. But yeah, it, it's basically been return of the day twos these last couple of weeks, um, right? Just everything's just, you know, day two, day three, day four, right? Like things are having more continuation. And so what I thought was that, you know, we were going to get, uh, last week, I, like I had thought that we were going to get our cool down, um, Right, but I felt like Bitcoin was gonna kind of have that kind of pull back, um, which we did get. Um, and I thought that everyone who was trying to get into Bitcoin would kind of suffer a little, uh, a little setback as uh, Bitcoin was kind of already extended, and we've seen these runners before. And so Bitcoin did. It kind of we did see that. Like we did see that Bitcoin kind of fall, and now it's rallying again. So like maybe these multi-day moves can make a second round. And I, like, I don't even, I don't even think bingo is related to that, but that's kind of an example of like, once we have a little set down, maybe even the ones that have already continued can continue. Like, I think that we were going to see a stall in the continuation and then maybe, a, and then maybe they could come back. And so I think I, I was kind of on it. Like we're definitely, it's definitely slowed down a little bit. So like, we'll see if the continuations now come back or we enter or like long just totally got too excited, too, too happy and they they eat shit. Yeah, return of the bears. The return of the disgruntled. And so, as you can see, like one thing about this market is even though we're starting to slow down, I think like there's still a lot of bullish sentiment out there. All of these stocks on on the left hand side are the stocks that I believe created a positive bullish sentiment in the market, and there's a lot of them, right? LMFA went nuts. NCTY went all the way to 18. LGHL had a couple of continuation. FTFT uh, continued yesterday and today. Uh, CPSH was a monster, um, was a monster, was a monster move. DPW made that monster move. Jivo had that, Jivo and Jagex had that, those awesome continuations. FRSX today just lit everything up. You know, obviously it's small cap market that's going, I, I, I don't even know a small cap market exists, maybe in the dot-com bubble, or something before I started trading where there was more bullish optimism than bears, but it's small cap line is always going to be more, but this is a huge bullish. Um, uh, this is a huge bullish. Um, how do I say what's, what's a reverse of a weight? <laughs> um, a, a, you know, like an upward tug on the market. Yeah. This is a huge, like normally like in, in a normal small cap market, you see a handful of positive influencers, and a shit ton of negative influencers in elevator. It's an elevator. Yeah. And so like the bullish factors in this market for, for this, for the market we're in, everything is still easy to borrow. Like I don't have, I don't see anybody having any borrowed problems, right? We're seeing multiple runners every single day, multiple multi-day runners. We're one thing that I love and see, this is, 
This is something that I think is a bearish factor when there's only one sector running. To me, that means what happens when the fire burns out. Right now, we got biotechs running. We got energy sectors running. We have, um, uh, like, what was the what was the new? We have Bitcoin sectors running. There was this like SCNS kind of ran, SCNS and a couple of other like I, I saw like three D printing stuff was kind of going up uh, for like medical devices. Shit, we got a whole lot of random crap running, and that's good because that means that there's no shortage of stocks that want to join the fray, and that's that's like. You know, like th there'll be no shortage of plays, like because anything and everything could sympathy marijuana. Like uh, literally, everything is happening right now, and this is—I mean, this is what to expect in January. Like overall, like we're seeing a slight slowdown in the market this week, but overall, I mean, the trend—if anything—the trend I think just got more bullish. Uh, the, you know, like the that kind of medium trend. I think we got more bullish currently week to week. We're currently suffering this little um you know this little like pullback in the market but like i think that the market is technically stronger um than it was a couple of weeks ago just solely on all of this um and yeah what's an offering right F first of all you know the market's strong when you don't know which stock was the leader because there was too many leaders right which one was the leader bingo jagex like jivo like which one was the leader? Like, you can't really know. Like, they're all strong. And so, and also, you know, like, what's an offering, right? Like, that's like, that's a big theme in this market. Like, offerings don't mean shit. Like, stocks are offering and then continuing up making all time highs. So, you know, that's a bullish sentiment. And the reason why is because when there's an offering, that's the biggest fear for a long race. Oh my God, I'm gonna get offered on. Now, well, I mean, offerings, they don't even tank when they offer. And Normally when they offer, it's been a good dip buy. So like what, what do longs have to be afraid of? Like th there's been no cataclysmic, just straight up, just death that happens. Um, and th so that fear isn't there. And so when that fear is not there, longs are in control. The bearish factors in this market is that the Bitcoin sector is falling a little bit flat, but it is coordinating with the Bitcoin pullback. So I think that's a weak bearish factor because it could easily continue. Um, a lot of extension in this market, that is a bearish factor when everything is like super high. Nobody, you know, that's a bearish factor because nobody wants to buy high. Um, you know, when everything, you know, it, it's nice when they're moving, but as things start to get all super um, extended, you know, you have to think that that's a bearish factor as demand will probably soon to want to wane on, at least on those names. Um, and yesterday, there was kind of a slight telling that maybe we have like a, a little slowdown, like a whole lot of stocks, like Tosh kind of said it in his webinar on yesterday, right? Everything felt anchor weighted, right? Like, like literally like OPTT was a big one. OPTT just totally just had a, a meltdown. And normally when you see like one stock have a complete and utter meltdown, that's a, that's, that's like a little hint for how you can kind of gauge like, Oh, whoa, I haven't seen some, I haven't seen an all day fader like that in a whole long time. Well, all right, guys, uh, one minute to spare. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. I'm gonna stop the record before I lose it. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you wanna see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.